Good evening, I'm Callie LeCount. And I'm Will Bond. Here's what's coming up next on Panther Vision. It's the biggest game of the season, and it's against UWM's biggest state rival. We'll take you to Madison for all the action. What are all these computers doing collecting dust in a warehouse? This is my inventory, basically. No, UWM doesn't have a hoarding problem. We'll explain. This is essentially becoming like a household item. This new technology could add another dimension to your life. We'll show you how. From the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, this is UWM Panther Vision. A weekly newscast reported, written, and produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication. And now, the news. Good evening. UWM is making Horizon League history again. The women's volleyball team won the conference championship game yesterday. That means UWM has taken the tournament crown in three fall sports, and that's a Horizon League first. In the past two weeks, both the men and women's soccer teams won their tournaments, earning an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. The only other school to achieve this feat is UWM in 2002. The men's soccer team drew a familiar and hated opponent. Kids playing on the sidelines with family and friends in the crowd. You would think you are watching a homecoming game of a local high school until you hear. The University of Wisconsin Madison has seen a rich tradition since being found in 1848, giving their students and alumni a point of pride. But when does it go too far? Coach Chris Kellerman says they're a complete team. We had to push a little bit more offensively. But why so much slander on this player? I transferred, um, this just wasn't for me here. UW Milwaukee's midfielder, Luke Goodnutter, played his freshman year as a Badger. It's been three years now. Being back in the McClyman soccer complex and losing to the Badgers 1-0 has Goodnutter saying, It's obviously disappointing. That's not to say that they didn't give it their all. And obviously, you know, being down a goal, you know, with 45 minutes of play, you got to have more of an aggressive mentality. And... Coach Kelderman says that they played better in the second half of the game. And senior Andrew Stone says they gave it their all on defense. Well, we, we just happened to find our rhythm. Even though the team went home with a loss, they accomplished one goal. Um, in the beginning of the season, we wanted to you know, to start goal, to get the NCAA tournament. So we accomplished that. In Madison, I'm Jenna McGlynn for Panther Vision. The Panthers made it into the NCAA tournament after winning the, Hor the Horizon League Conference Tournament last Sunday. After the victory over UIC, the Panthers gathered in the pavilion to find out their opponent. The team was excited to play against the Big Ten opponent. <laughs> Well, it's exciting. You know, we're playing against a team that uh, you know we're fairly familiar with. Um, it's exciting because it's in our home state. Season. UWM is not in compliance with the Higher Education Opportunities Act. Among other things, the act requires universities to make textbook information available to students at the time they register for classes. The first day of spring registration was November 18th but only one-third of course book adoptions were publicly available. The consequences for noncompliance range from a fine to loss of federal funding. The provost is ordering all deans and department chairs to submit a compliance plan by December 6th. A new study shows more than half university faculty and staff are dissatisfied with the amount of training they receive for an active shooter situation. The survey was done by the organization Campus Safety, which bills itself as a technology resource for security, police, and administrators. Their nationwide poll shows 32% of administrators, faculty, and staff say they are somewhat unsatisfied with the amount of training they receive. And 23% said they are very unsatisfied. As we've been reporting, UWM does not require active shooter training for its employees. 
And even though students tell us that they have no idea what to do, UWM does not show an active shooter preparedness video at freshman orientation. One top university official told us they don't show the video because they don't want to scare people, or, in his words, make parents paranoid. There are lots of questions about UWM's preparedness, but what about MATC? In tonight's MATC report, Sam Gritzmacher investi investigates the school safety alert system. As the clocks roll back and the weather gets chilly, the MATC rave alert system becomes even more important. The rave alert system is a product that the college uses for emergency notifications to students, faculty, and staff. It could be an emergency situation such as the college is closed due to weather, uh, electrical outage, any kind of crisis, and it's used to alert people uh, that there's a situation and to direct them where they can get more. I took a walk around campus and asked some students if they knew what the rave alert system was. One student had a general idea. Yes, that's an emergency system. Uh, I think it's, they do it for emergency purposes to alert you of weather alerts and uh, things pertaining to the students. Other students had never heard of it. Do you know what the MATC rave alert system is? No, I do not. No, I don't. So, how can the students update where the alerts are being sent? There's a text link on the front page of matc.edu, um, rave alert, click on there and you are automatically taken to the login page. You need your MATC login and then you can enter your information. Again, your MATC email is the default, but you can add a landline, a mobile line or another email address. Yes, I will be adding another email and a phone number to my email account so I can receive updates. In Milwaukee, for the MATC report, I'm Samantha Gertzmacher. All students and staff are automatically signed up for the alert system. She said it in 1992, but it's now costing her a high-level government position. The New, York, the New York Times excuse me, is reporting that UW-Madison's chancellor was a top candidate to lead President Obama's Council of Economic Advisors in 2011. But once the White House found out Rebecca Blank used the word redistribution in her research on poverty and economics, she didn't get the nomination. The newspaper reports that with the Affordable Health Care Act under fire, the word redistribution is considered toxic because it implies scholastic policies. The UW system has $142 million with no documented plans for spending it. The money is part of the $1 billion surplus that set off a firestorm in the Capitol. When the surplus was revealed last spring, some legislators were furious that the system had raised tuition and asked for more state funding. Lawmakers responded with a two-year freeze on the tax support and tuition. UW-Madison has the majority of money with no spending plan. UWM claims it does not hold any money in surplus. UWM does have a different kind of surplus, though. And it may rival eBay. Panther Vision's Mike Picaro tells us about UWM's online auction room. What happens when couches, computers, and weight machines leave UWM's campus? This is my inventory, basically. So I manage everything that comes in here. Out with the old and in with the new is something Jeremy Sabrin knows all too well. As soon as something old is way outdated, then it starts to come here. In order to keep campus halls clear for students and workers, old items are transported 10 minutes, but a world away to Sabrin's care at the UWM Services and Research Building. Bicycles, riot helmets, filing cabinets, and scoreboards are all things you can find under Sabrin's care. While some may see it as junk, Sabrin sees it as opportunity. It's a bidding process like eBay. UWM teams up with UW-Madison to sell old items through their online public swap auction. The auctions go for about two weeks, and I've had things sell from anywhere from $5 to, uh, I think we just sold some recording equipment for like, $3,000 on there. 10% of the profit goes to Madison, while the rest goes to Sabrin's department. So it's all going to a good cause within the campus. It's not like, you know, we're having parties back here with it or anything. So. Nope. No parties are going on here with CPR mannequins. We just, we just put it up as a warning. You know? <laughs> but in the meantime, Sabrin enjoys the company of products from the past. I know where the stuff is. Like, it might not be in a good spot, but I know where it is. In Milwaukee, I'm Mike Picaro for Panther Vision. You can see what the surplus store has to offer by doing a web search for the word swap online auction. 
and coming up after the break. Money, money, money. It's a rich man's world. We'll tell you what's happening to tuition costs. And the days may be getting shorter, but so is the countdown to graduation. All that and more when we return. This warning, because radon can cause lung cancer. Radon is an invisible radioactive gas that seeps inside your home from underground. Protect your family. Have your home tested. Call 1-800-SOS-RADON. Radon problems can be fixed. This is where powerful ideas lead to proven results. This is where you belong. A strong, productive workforce. Building one requires proper education and training, not just for today, but for tomorrow. That's why for the last 100 years, thousands of successful workers wearing hats like these began their careers with this one hat. Thanks for watching UWM Panther Vision, Judge Best Student Newscast by the Northwest Broadcast News Association. Panther Vision is produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication in association with Milwaukee Area Technical College. How much is the price of an education? This year, the United States will make $51 million in interest from student loans. But in tonight's MATC report, T Tim Strzeszewski found out that financial relief is on its way. The majority of students utilize federal and private loans to make a lasting investment for their future. These loans not only come at a high cost to the borrower, but at an extreme economic cost as well. While attending a press conference introducing the Higher Ed Lower Debt Bill, we found out that borrowers with student loan debt are twice as likely to purchase a used car and they are twice as likely to rent rather than to buy a home. The executive director for the One Wisconsin Institute spoke in support of the Higher Ed Lower Debt legislation. The uh, Higher Ed Lower Debt Bill is really groundbreaking legislation because first it would allow uh, students to be able to refinance their student loans at a lower rate through a new uh, student loan refinancing authority uh, administered by the state of Wisconsin. Second, it would provide uh, substantial tax relief um, for people who are paying student loan debt off. Um, I think the you know it could be as much as $500 an individual every year that you can get back on your taxes for the payments that you make on your student loan debt. Um, third, um, it provides more transparency and gathering of data so that we know exactly how big the problem is here in the state of Wisconsin. And then fourth, it provides some loan counseling so that uh, and ranking so that people know what are the good loans to get, what are the ones that might be challenging, and to have the information to make the best decisions they can make. Only time will tell if this legislation will have lasting effects on borrowers and the economy. Here in Milwaukee, I'm student reporter Tim Strzeszewski. Supporters of the bill are touring campuses across the state to gather support. For more information, visit OneWisconsinNow.org. The U.S. Department of Education says the University of Wisconsin-Green Bay has the lowest tuition in the UW system. One reason for UWGB's lower tuition is because they charge extra for things like improving advising and, or career planning. While they have the lowest tuition, many other factors go into determining a school's overall affordability. The UW Flex Option Program is open for applicants. The program allows students to get credit for what they already know. Two-year colleges in UWM are the first institutions in the state to offer flex degrees. Students enrolled in the program can begin academics starting January 2nd. And with just more than a month until December graduation, seniors are preparing for life after college. As Panther Vision's Tony Atkins found out, senioritis is affecting many. For many students, the routine schedule of going to class and studying has become second nature. But for this particular graduate student, that routine is about to change. 
Hi, my name is Mario McCoy, and I am a victim of senioritis. This is nothing new to McCoy, who is going through his third episode of senioritis. The first episode was in high school. High school, I was, I mentally was not there. Then that episode spun off into undergrad. As a undergraduate student, um, I balanced a lot of different activities, being a part of different organizations. While McCoy is weeks away from earning his master's degree at UWM, the month of November has gotten no easier for him. Every November is always a challenging month for every student, whether you're undergrad or grad, because you got midterms, preparation for finals, a couple assignments in between. Like That's really like the bread and butter of what you're going to get in your particular class. Even with that, the experienced senior has one remedy for senioritis. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. People like Sherry Finnick, a career counselor at UWM's Career Center, helps students like McCoy prepare for life after college. Because some of them seem to be ready to commit everything to getting the job search done, and then I worry a little bit about how that last semester stuff is going to go. As for McCoy, he is finishing strong, but the end is drawing near. I'd probably say maybe in about a week or two it might click. So. And what's the first thing on McCoy's postgraduate agenda? I want some NYPD pizza <laughs> and a vacation. So that's really going to be it for me. In Milwaukee, I'm Tony Atkins, UWM Panther Vision. UWM's commencement ceremony will take place at the U.S. Cellular Arena on December 15th. <laughs> James Ashcroft, number three from the men's soccer team, joins us with the weather. Congratulations on a great career, James. I was at the game um, last week and it was a bit chilly. Oh, thanks, Callie. Yeah, it was, a, it was a cold week for sure, but you know, these pilgrims of Thanksgiving, they've only brought more cold weather across. As we look forward to the week, we can expect to see a lot of snow in the early days, but don't worry, there will be some sun on Wednesday and Thursday, but snow will return on the weekend. As we look outside right now, we can see temperatures 25. It's partly cloudy in areas with light bit of snow blowing across. Today, though, we're going to see more snow, highs of 31, lows of 24, definitely wrap up warm. As we look across the lows for the state, we can see Oshkosh at 21, Eau Claire up there, northwest 19, and our very own Milwaukee, 25 degrees Celsius. On into the highs, we've got a 32 in Rhinelander, 36 in Eau Claire, and a 34 in Milwaukee. Tonight, though, expect more snow, lows of 25, with a wind coming off that lake at four miles per hour. It will be chilly. Into tomorrow, we're going to see more snow flurries, highs of 28, low of 19. It's going to be getting very chilly. But um, not to worry, if you haven't got your turkey for Thanksgiving yet, you can go and kill a fresh one on Wednesday because the weather is looking mostly sunny, so it's good for that hunting. And for the rest of the week, we can expect to see sun on Thursday, make it a good Thanksgiving. Mostly sunny on Friday for them Black Friday sales. But back into the weekend, we're going to be seeing more snow across the state of Wisconsin. Great. Well, thank you very much for the weather. No yeah. worries, guys. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. Good to know I can go hunting for that turkey on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Is this world being watched by intelligence greater than man? Researchers from the University of Madison observed 28 neutrinos that traveled millions of light years before crashing to Earth. Researchers have been unable to identify where the neutrinos come from. The neutrinos, or cosmic rays, crashed into the South Pole, creating blue light the size of six blocks. And the rays were powerful. The Large Hadron Collider in Geneva can only produce cosmic rays with one ten millionth of the energy that the neutrinos produced. Coming up after the break, the volleyball team goes digging for hardware. But they're not the only team on an archaeological task. We will show you all three dimensions of the discovery. All that and more when Panther Vision returns. This warning because smoking causes lung cancer. The Surgeon General issued this warning because radon can cause lung cancer. Radon is an invisible radioactive gas that seeps inside your home from underground. Protect your family. Have your home tested. Call 1-800-SOS-RADON. Radon problems can be fixed. This is where powerful ideas lead to proven results.
This is where you belong. A strong, productive workforce. Building one requires proper education and training, not just for today, but for tomorrow. That's why for the last 100 years, thousands of successful workers wearing hats like these began their careers with this one hat. Thanks for watching UWM Panther Vision, Judge Best Student Newscast by the Northwest Broadcast News Association. Panther Vision is produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication in association with Milwaukee Area Technical College. Another week, another Horizon League Tournament Championship. Jenna McGlynn joins us with sports. The UWM women's volleyball team is on their way to the NCAA tournament. The Panthers defeated the Valparaiso Crusaders three sets to one in the championship on Sunday afternoon. Tournament VIP Maggie Dunbar had 14 kills to share the team lead with Julie Kolinsky. Kolinsky was named to the all-tournament team along with Taylor Galobowski. The Panthers make it to the NCAA tournament for the 10th time in school history and will find out their opponent on Sunday night during the selection show. The UWM's men's soccer team lost to the Badgers in the last round of the first round in the NCAA tournament on Thursday. It's been a great team, but uh, you know we had our chances and we just uh, we didn't convert on them in the in the final third. The loss concludes the men's soccer season with a 15-2-2 record. Junior captain Lori Bell was named Horizon League Player of the Year, and freshman goalkeeper Liam Anderson tied the school record of 10 shutouts. The men's basketball team is back on track. Team beat Tennessee back Tech 70-63 on Saturday. Austin Aarons led the team with 17 points. Matt Tybee and Kyle Clem scored 14 points each. The victory comes on the heels of a loss to DePaul. The teams traded the lead to in the first, but the Blue Devils shot 60% in the second and won 80 to 71. Matt Tybee had 14 points and 11 rebounds for the Panthers. Four last-minute free throws by Mitch Rolke helped clinch that win over the Golden Eagles, and that's a bigger deal than you might think, as a Panther Vision's Joe Horning shows you Rolke has interesting backstory. Starting off just like any other, but for senior guard Mitch Rolke, each game is special. The fifth-year senior doesn't play in every game, but he is of great value to the team. I'm just like another coach out there. I mean, I know, like, I know what's supposed to happen. I mean, if I see something that I want someone else to see or like do, I'm going to tell them. Uh, I, I put on like a great scout with uh, some of the assistant coaches. Like, I give the guys great looks. And Unlike some of his highly recruited teammates, Rolke took an unusual route to the team. Didn't really think about playing basketball in college. I got offers from some small schools around the state, but didn't really want to go to a small city. Um, ended up going to UWM, got the manager gig. After working hard, performing odd jobs such as driving the team van and assisting players after practice, Rolke went from manager to player. Worked out every day and in the uh, spring, did all the workouts and wasn't guaranteed anything, but they gave me a jersey right before my sophomore year. Even his first game action as a Panther did not startle him. I got a little nervous, but I just got in my zone. I mean, I just got out there, I knew what I had to do, just run the offense, facilitate, and then if I get open, I'm going to shoot the ball. Although he averages only four minutes per game, Wilkie cherishes the opportunity given to him. I mean, it's just a great opportunity, man. I've got, I got to play with a lot of good people. I mean, the coaches have been great for giving me the opportunity. He may be graduating this spring, but Mitch Rolke's passion for basketball will not fade away. I'll be in the pavilion. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be in Milwaukee. In Milwaukee, I'm Joe Horning for Panther Vision. The team's record is 5-2. and two. The women's basketball team is now in the win column. The team won their first game of the season Saturday, beating North Dakota State 76-64. Right, 
Beautiful, Junior Ashley beautiful. Green had the fifth double-double of her career, scoring 21 points and 11 rebounds. Sophomore Ivana Young scored 22 points and had 9 rebounds. The team heads to New Mexico face off against the Lobos this week. That's it for sports. Back to you, Will and Callie. Your printer might be able to print in color or scan or fax. But that's so last week. Kevin Greinke tells, uh, tells us about a story that has more than just two dimensions. Looking at computer screens all night would make some students brain dead, but Ryan Evers and Gerardo Mora have found a three-dimensional solution where they can bounce ideas off of each other when they hit a wall. Oh, it just wakes you up, uh, gets your mind moving again, maybe off the project and that kind of thing. But a new luxury available only to architecture students helps their models take form. It's kind of like an archaeological dig. You know, it'll, uh, it'll layer and layer and layer all the starch on, uh, on top of each other and then you have to literally go into a, a big bin of a starch and kind of dig out your dinosaur fossil. Tad Jamie Field is explaining a 3D printer that for now is exclusive to the rapid prototyping lab at UWM, but he thinks in the future even your grandma will own one. This is essentially becoming like a household item. You can make a parallel between this type of 3D technology and another one. Had you said in 1984 when the first 3D printer was developed that in 30 years people would be watching movies with these on, you'd have been laughed out of the theater. It may be a radical step forward in technology, but the advantages have the upper hand. Just actually physically having a 3D model instead of having to make it by hand every wall or every window. The benefits of 3D printing aren't limited to just one area. So it's pretty, it's pretty applicable to a lot of different fields, not just the design field, but you know, the medical field or the industrial field. Uh, architects just happen to stumble upon them and like we can make awesome stuff with it. It might be from the world of science fiction right now, but talks of 3D printing being used for recreational purposes are on the table. 3D printing is just the beginning of it. I think um, fabrication is uh, like the next handsaw. In Milwaukee, I'm Kevin Grinke for Panther Vision. UWM's architecture program isn't the only place where 3D printing is part of student life. Some universities have made 3D printers available in campus libraries. James Ashcroft joins us again for, a, for another look at our Thanksgiving weather. Um, so what, what are we dealing with here? It's, it's pretty snowy outside right now. It is. It's, it's a strange one, you know. I mean, I don't remember them personally, but when the Pilgrims first came across on that sunny ship from Boston, they brought the sun. Ironically, it's uh, snowing right now. But we'll, we will see the sun again on Wednesday. So for uh, the big hunters in the state, you know, you can get out there, you can find a turkey and uh, hopefully bring him home for a nice big dinner at the end of the day. Is, uh, is the soccer season done, or, or are you guys going to practice more in the, in the cold? Um, no, luckily, or well, unfortunately rather, it's, it's over for us now, so uh, we get to put our feet up and uh, get fat on some turkey, mashed potatoes, and uh, whatever else you want to eat with your turkey. Great. Thank you very much, James. Thanks, Will. And thank you for tuning in to, for tonight's edition of Panther Vision. You can watch us on Time Warner Channel 14 and AT&T Uverse Channel 99 at 5 o'clock on Wednesdays and Fridays. Have a great week.